Captain on the bridge. All right, Captains, we are back on the bridge. And today, what I wanted to do is do another follow-up video to my T6, what T6 ship to get video. This time, since right now we have the 2022 year-long event campaign going on, I thought I would drop my two ECs on what I would recommend. And just like the previous T6 and T5 video, this is going to lean a little bit more heavy on sort of just more space Barbie as opposed to traits or consoles. There are some happy accidents when it comes to some of the ships that I have. They do have some of the quote unquote meta or must have end game consoles or traits. So again, those are just happy accidents, but that's what I wanted to do now. So what we'll do is go over that list. Right now, I'm in my Crossfield Refit ship, which is actually included as a part of the event campaign as a ship that you can get if you choose so. So obviously, 100%, I'll start off with this ship. Totally recommend getting this. One, it's the hero ship. Two, it has a very, very good trait called Universal Designs, which you see me use on most of all of my builds, which is pretty much end game meta and will do really well in terms of just your average nightly pew pews shenanigans that we do here on the bridge. And this ship fixed a lot of problems that I had with the original Discovery. They, they kind of streamlined it, made it look really sleek. And even though I said I don't really like the floaty bit nacelles, it's the only part I get it. It's a refit and it's Crossfield refit. But it's a really good platform as well. And I mean, look at that. It just looks so pretty. Yes? No? Anyways. So there's one of my first recommendations there. So what we'll do here is go over the reward info and we'll just go down the list. Again, captains, all you have to do is just all the events in 2022 to have the progress to work towards this. Not only this, but again, you can also get the two tier six ship coupons, which again, I did a video on that again. I would add on to those the Terran bundle that we just recently had, the four ships. Of course, there I will actually do another vid in regards to what I recommend in the low buy store if you pick that reward. But here we go. So the event campaign four prize premium E6 Starship choices. So I'm going to first go here to the United Earth Defense Force Vessel. Captains, you've already seen me fly this. This is what we lovingly call the USS Dumbo, tooth, Ikea top table, trousers. It is a very, very good performing ship. No doubt, 100%. This was actually gifted to me by Nick NB. Shout out to you, Nick. And really, I think do believe it does hold the highest record in the ISC charts. It's a great torpedo platform, really excels even with only four stations in that type of build. But even in just normal gameplay, it's an okay ship. It's really, any ship could be okay to be honest with you, but this is one of the recommendations I will make more so due to performance because I have it. I know I said Space Barbie, and then here, here I am recommending Dumbo, but I have the ship. It was gifted to me. Performance-wise, it's really good. Now, Kirk Temporal Heavy Battle Cruiser. I don't have the ship, but it is one of the ships that I am considering in terms of just Space Barbie. It does have a very, very cool-looking saucer, in my opinion. Where it loses me, though, is the pylons. I wish they were just kind of stri straight as opposed to kind of bent inwards is kind of how I do that. But that is probably one of the ships that I'm putting on my list to probably get when it comes to this event campaign. Next ship up is the Parliament Miracle Worker Survey Cruiser. Captains, I love this ship. I know there's a lot of people that do not like the ship due to quote unquote the seating and performance ceiling, but that's not why I got it. I got it because 
of Lower Decks. 100% point blank. I couldn't care less if it did minus one DPS. I would choose a ship all over again if I had to. It is a great ship in my opinion. I can make it work for how I play. Again, this is just my recommendation. So for me, it, it has a lot of TNG notes when it comes to its design. And I do really appreciate that. And that's why I think I was more in terms of getting it because of its looks and how closely it was tied to TNG, in my opinion. So next ship, again, the Crossfield Science Spearhead Refit. That is the ship that I'm in currently. Seeing the thumbnail there. Great ship, great torpedo platform, I've put it, and I've heard people do really well in Science Build as well. And she's a nimble ship. I've done video on this before, so check that out, Kaz. But this, this ship is really, really good in anything that you want to do with it. Next up. I will go with the Delkina Command Strike Wing Warbird. I have this on my Romulan and I've done a couple of videos on it. I didn't like it at first to be 100% honest, but it grew on me. And when something grows on me and I have the itch to, that I want it, I'll get it. And so I did. I just got off the exchange at, this, at that point, but no regrets. No regrets whatsoever. It's a great torpedo platform. It did well in beams. Again, all these ships will do well as long as you synergize as best as you can. And if you're not in the game of the end game meta, running countless hours of IAC, this ship will do more than enough in any of the content that Stowe has to offer. And that goes with any of the ship that we're recommending. So great ship from Star Trek Picard and a great, great ship to add to the Romulan fleet in my opinion. Next up, also from Star Trek Picard, is the Inquiry Battle Cruiser. We had this ship featured on one of our videos coming up, and I didn't like it. You'll, you'll notice me say that a lot. I didn't like it at first, but it grew on me. The one thing that didn't grow on me is the grill as a deflector. Other than that, it's a great ship. I think it, it's a great update to what we know as the modern TNG ships, in my opinion. It does have the right notes, has the right looks, with the exception of the deflector. Other than that, it does do really well, and I'm glad to have it in my collection, so I 100% recommend the Inquiry Battlecruiser. Plus, it was Riker's ship. Come on now, please. Right. Next ship up here is the Miracle Worker Flight Deck Carrier, which is your Connie from the Disco Universe. This is a very good ship in terms of looks. It has the swept back pylons. And I believe, and I really do believe it is a great, great update to the classic TOS ship. First time I saw the ship, fell in love with it. Not a fan of its pets, to be honest, to be 100% honest, but it was in the show, it's canon, what can you do? Plus, it does come with the advanced phaser beam arrays that you saw on the show, and then something that you can buy from the Dilithium store if you need more of. It unlocks that. Again, it's a great, great ship, in my opinion, the Miracle Worker Flight Deck Carrier. Next up, I will recommend this ship because this is also one of the ships that I'm looking at. I don't have this yet. The D7 Miracle Worker Flight Deck Carrier, which is the, the ship that has, one, it was in Star Trek Discovery. Two, it does have the trait called Ruin of Our Enemies, which is a really good meta endgame trait. And like I said, Captains, I play this game so casually, but I also dabble in the meta. I'm considering this ship for that, but it also is a good looking ship. It's a, it's a D7. And it, it stays true to Klingon design, in my opinion. I'm not 100% sure, but regardless, it's there. It has a good trait. I would be getting this one for the trait. I wish that these ships would be more account-wide as opposed to character, because I would only put this on my Federation for the trait. Doesn't say that I can't fly the D7, say that my captain 
commandeer the ship for a mission or two to get the trait at least. But I would rather have that so that I can, after get the trait or whatever, put it on my actual KDF. But again, it's a great ship. These ships are, again, from Star Trek Discovery. So going on to the next one. And of course, you have your good old temporal light cruiser. This was the first expensive Connie <laughs> that I bought. Of course, this is the Connie refit, Constitution class. This was the second ship I saw in Star Trek. And I fell in love with the ship 100%. It had such an elegance to it. And I, again, didn't care what it came with. I would have gotten it regardless. Having said that, its seating is very versatile. It only has four bridge officer seatings, but you can make whatever you want, put whatever you want, build on it, and it'll still work fine as long as you synergize your your weapons, your shift traits, buffs, abilities, and all that stuff. So 100% do recommend the Ani. You also have your D7, of course, Temple Battlecruiser and Tillis Temple Warbird. Same thing, classics. Can't go wrong with them. I'd be doing a disservice if I didn't recommend them because I do have legendary versions that have these skins. So they're great ships all around, regardless. So any of these three the Temporal Light Cruiser, D7 Temporal Battle Cruiser, the Tillis Temple Warbird totally 100% recommend. Going down the list here, the next one up. Or the next two is the Gem Hadar Strike Ship and the Gem Hadar Recon Ship. Both of these ships come with the trait Go for the Kill. 100% that's why I got the ship was Go for the Kill because it extends cannon rapid fire. And who wouldn't want an extended cannon rapid fire on their Defiant? Just saying. The Strike, I believe, is the command. And then the recon is the intel or one or the other, but I know I just got the one for the trait 100%. I haven't flown it because it isn't my main, but I got that trait for my Defiant. So that it could, again, extend CRF by another five seconds, which is going to be 100% uptime the whole time you are using CRF on the Defiant. So there's that. Next one up, the Deimos Pilot Destroyer Captains. You hear me talk about the ship all the time. This is what I got from my last year's event campaign reward. I got it for the sole purpose of the emulating Phaser Lance. Great, great console. It is a meta console, but not only that, it looks pretty when you're firing it. I'll be 100% honest, I got it also for my Gal X. Because you've heard me say this before in previous videos, that Gal X Lance cannot hit the side of a Starbase. So, at least having this allows me to play up my immersion <laughs> so that I can have a lance that actually hits a target and again, looks pretty good doing so. The ship itself, we have a video coming up for it, is really great. I don't like it just because of how flat it looks, but it is from Star Trek Picard and it's a cannon ship. I'm glad I have it. And when I tried out the actual ship itself, it performed really well. But yes, 100% the Deimos Pilot Destroyer I got for the emulating Phaser Lance, which is like on almost all my builds. Next one up is the Mira Warship. This is another ship that I don't have, but is on my list. And the reason why is it, one, it is the disco prize of the Mira Universe in Discovery, and which was seen on just like an Elkar screen. I had it before, but I sold it. And I don't regret selling it, but I know it does still have a very, very good trait on it, which is tearing goodbye. It is on the list because if I wanted a mirror version, I could use it, but that would literally be at least the two uses for me personally is one, if I wanted to play Space Barbie on the Disco Prize Terran Theme, I'd go that way, but also use a trait. But I still get along pretty well enough that I don't need the trait, but it's still on the list along with the Kirk Battle Cruiser. 
but I would lean more towards a mirror worship because of the trade itself. And again, the, the new ketchup Aaron markings, they look fantabulous. And we went over that in those Terran bundles uh, videos that we did recently. So there's that. Next one up, the Liberated Borg Command Juggernaut. C Captains, you know I love my command. I did want the ship at one time, and I still do. It's still on the list. I'd say it'd be on the lower end of the list. But the reason why I want it was more of like a theme thing. So when this first came out, I wanted it, but then again, put it on the back burner. I did get all the Borg offerings that this lockbox came with. I don't regret getting those, getting those, but I still don't have the ship. But if I wanted to Borgify a ship, I can just put all the pieces from the Borg rep on my ship to make it Borgified. But this is still a ship that I would recommend because one, it's command. Two, it, it is very impressive in terms of the size. And for those captains who love just their big ships, well, this one has it. Plus it has a big aft. What? Just saying. Next up is the Kelvin Heavy Destroyer. I love this ship 100%. This is the ship that we saw battling the Narada in the Star Trek movie in the KT universe when that came out. It's something about its design that I just I just love with the secondary hull and above, the warp myself below, everything about it I love. And it was the ship that I used in the longest time as my torpedo platform and it really did well. And same thing with the Calvin Timeline D7. I wouldn't mind recommending that. They're pretty much the same in terms of seating. The only thing I believe the Calvin Timeline D7 has is just a cloaking device, which even though my ships have cloaking device, I don't use them. But 100%, I got this for the looks and the benefits of it secondarily just was a happy, happy accident because it has a great, great platform for torpedoes, in my opinion and it works well for me. So there's that. Of course, the Mirror Strike Wing Escort, we do have it from the Terran bundle. It comes only in the Terran bundle, but you can also get it as a reward in the event campaign, which comes with the trait SAD. We've covered that a couple times already in numerous videos. Really good ship. The tier six skin of it looks really good. Performance wise, solid ship, solid ship, 100%. Very good platform for beam overload. And the reason why I do like it is because I have it. I've tried it. We made a video on it. So again, no necessarily you know, negative feelings towards it, but something that I would recommend if you're just looking for that one sad. Again, this is a year-long campaign. For me, I wouldn't. If I didn't have the Terran Pundle, would I get this? No, not, not for me. So... But not to say that it's not a good platform. So it's hard for me not to recommend because it is a good ship having been flown, having flown it already and built something on it. And I probably would come back to it definitely and probably see what else we can do for it. So there's that. The next one I would recommend here would be the Vern. I've said this before, my Saifu is pretty weak. This ship is a very, very solid, solid, if not like one of the highest performing side platforms. It's not bad looking when it comes to Federation looks. It's very, it has a wing design. And I, the reason why I tend to go more Fetty is because the designs are so unique. The nacelles, pylons, saucer, secondary hull, all that stuff, they kind of speak to me more. But the Vern, again, I do have the tier five version. This ship is very good and it is on my list to get, but kind of on the lower end, somewhere around with the Borg Juggernaut. But I would be, again, I'd be doing the service to the ship if I didn't recommend it because it is a good ship in my opinion. The next up here would be the prototype Dreadnought Cruiser. This ship captains is what I rave about all the time in most of my build videos because it, it has the DPRM. And of course, the DPRM 
is the dynamic power redistributor module. It, it sucks it can only come on this ship, but it is a good ship in itself, the Atlas. If you want like a battleship for your TOS theme tune, this would be a great ship to get. And again, that's a prototype Dreadnought Cruiser. I have it. I have a build video coming up for it down the line. When I start getting the TOS fields, I will be doing that. But first and foremost, I got this ship for the DPRM. I've tr I have flown the Atlas and it was it performed really well as a beam over a little bit. Again, as long as you build your ships that synergize with trace weapons, consoles, and all that, it will do fine. Okay, but no, yeah, totally recommend prototype Dreadnought Cruiser. I know this is the top on a lot of my fellow captains list because of the DPRM, because of all the benefits, it will help improve a build like 100%. So there's that. Next up is the Kelvin Timeline Heavy Command Cruiser or the KT Connie. <laughs> I didn't like the ship at first, but it grew on me. And comparing it to the refit that we saw at the very end of the last KT movie we got, I definitely did like this. The only issue for me on this is I just wish that the pine, if you're looking at it from the front, I just wish that the pylons were pushed outward a little bit more. I don't mind them being straight. That's totally fine. And maybe slimming down the nacelles just a wee bit. But regardless, it's a great ship. It's a command cruiser. It aged really well in the meta of torpedoes because you can make a torpedo boat from it. You can make a tank from it. And we've made a torpedo boat, and I love, love the ship to bits. And... I'm very, very happy to have it in my collection. So there's another ship that I do highly, highly recommend that you captains grab because it still does really well in today's end game. And I'll say end game, all the ships that I've recommended here will still do very, very well. And just like the advanced content, even elite content, as long as you synergize your build and they look pretty too. So that is sort of my recommendation here or the premium ships again the tier six ones we went over that i would just add those four ships from the terran bundle the cygnus the trailblazer lexington adamant because you can get that with the two tier six the low buy crystal will make that a separate video but i just wanted to throw down my two ecs on my recommendations for this year's event campaign and again as you can see this is one of the ships I have no regrets having any of the ships that I've gotten. Even though this ship came with one of the best traits in the game, it wouldn't have mattered if it came with the worst trait in the game. I would have gotten it still because it does look pretty good, in my opinion. So, Captains, we're going to leave it on that. Again, all we just want to throw out there is the recommendation. It's just to keep doing the events so that you can have the progress towards your ship that you have been wanting to add to your fleet. So, captains, on that note, we're going to leave it on this. Don't let them promote you. Don't let them transfer you. Don't let them do anything that takes you off the bridge of that ship because while you're there, you can make a difference.